Hello everyone, Professor T here. In this SPSS tutorial, I'm going to help you conduct data analysis by using two common statistical tests, the chi-square test of independence and Spearman's row rank correlation coefficient. I'm here in my SPSS home screen, and it gives you the option of restoring points, recent files, or sample files. This is where I'm going to click because rather than putting in my own data, I'm going to simply open up a sample file that already has data in it, much like you do for your surveys that come already with answers in them. So I'm going to scroll down to select a specific sample file provided by SPSS. And in this case, I'm going to pick this one titled Survey Sample. So it's a sample survey file with several survey questions and data already in them. So this is my output file that I'm going to minimize here. And I'm just going to look at my data file. So here's my data with all of my variables set up. Your survey file is set up in a similar fashion. Your survey questions will be displayed in columns under data view, but if we go to variable view by clicking on the bottom left corner here, you will see that your survey questions will be displayed in rows instead. So in variable view, your questions are displayed in rows, whereas in data view, your questions are displayed in columns. So they're already set up here with the type of variable, any values, and the measurement scales. To conduct our chi-square test of independence, which is a test that uses nominal level data, so simply categories, and looks for any relationship between two nominal, two categorical variables. So for this chi-square test, I'm going to use the variable sex that is designated right here and the variable marital status, which is right here. So marital status, that's the descriptive label. And how about the values? Which types of marital status do we have? Well, it's set up here as number one corresponding to married, two widow, three divorced, separated, never married, and non-applicable or non-available. So that's our nominal level variable marital. How about sex? Well, the description is gender, and if we go to values, we'll see that one's for male and two's for female, very binary. Um, I would would have added a third uh, option, such as other or non-binary, as many of you guys did in your own surveys. But this is what we have for SPSS. So we're going to go with their conservative descriptions for our nominal level variable sex. All right, so we got sex and we got marital status. So our question is, um, is there any relationship between someone's marital status and their gender? Does somebody's marital status bear any relationship to their gender? So in order to answer that question, we are going to analyze the data. So we're going to go to menu, the menu analyze. And as you know, for chi-square test of independence, we go to descriptive statistics, even though we are going to do an inferential test eventually, and cross tabs. Analyze descriptive statistics, cross tabs. Click on there. And now we have all of our variables here, right? We could scroll down and see all the ones we have in our data set. We are going to pick the ones that interest us. So we're going to do marital status. You can click on the arrow to move it to the row box. And then we're going to click on gender. And you can just simply double click on it, or maybe not. You can simply click on gender and the arrow to move it to column. It doesn't matter which one is a row, which one is a column. Then we are going to click on statistics over here on the right and check off the box chi-square. That's all you got to do and then click continue. There are other options as we saw in lab. If you click cells, you have the option of getting percentages for rows and columns, etc. We're going to leave it at that as is and simply click OK to run our chi-square test.
This is our output file, which I can maximize here. Over here on the left, we have sort of a navigation bookmark uh, type of options. And if you click on them, it will walk you through what you have on the screen. So that's our data set. The case processing summary tells you how many cases. They had 2,831 cases or responses. Um, all of them were valid, uh, etc. And then we, if we click on the left here for our, our cross tabs, it's going to give us the information regarding the number of respondents that said they were married and male, married and female, widow, widowed and male, widowed and female, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then finally, our chi-square test of independence is given here. So as you'll recall from lab, we are interested mainly in this asymptotic significance two-sided for the Pearson chi-square. So this number that says less than 0 0.001 uh, is the p-value of our test. So if our p-value is less than 0.05, which presumably is our specified alpha value, then we have a statistically significant test. So is 0 0.001 or less than that, less than 0.05, our alpha value? Yes, it is. So our p-value is less than our alpha. Therefore, we have a statistically significant uh, test a result. So uh, this means then that, back to our research question, there seems to be a significant relationship between someone's marital status and their gender. If we look at the data, and it's always a good idea to just go back and look, you can see that, for example, while there's more or less an equal number of married males and females, slightly more females, but more or less equal, there's a huge discrepancy between the number of widowed females, 232, and widowed males, only 51. So there's a lot more females that are widowers than males. And that may be the source of this significant relationship, right? Uh, there seems, it seems to matter whether you are male or female for whether you are a widower or not. So, um, we can say that there's a statistically significant relationship between uh, marital status and gender. So that's our chi-square test of independence. Now, let's look at maybe running a Spearman's row rank correlation coefficient. We're going to go back to our data set. I just minimized our output file. So now we're back to our data set. And here, we need to use what type of variables, what type of measurement scale? Can we use nominal variables with Spearman's row? We cannot. So with Spearman's row, we're now talking about correlations rather than just a test of independence. And here we're going to need at least ordinal level data. So it could be ordinal, ratio, or interval, or ratio. And in this case for SPSS, it could be, uh, let's say, scale, or ordinal, right? Because SPSS lumps ratio and interval under scale. So uh, we're going to pick two variables. In this case, I'm going to look at degree, which seems to be the highest educational level, the highest degree obtained, and political views. So somebody's political orientation. Let's look at the labels uh, that they have as well as the values that were specified. So if I make this a little bigger, whoops, I mean to make all of them bigger, uh, we'll see that for political views it says think of self as liberal or conservative. So that seemed to be their survey question, let's say, which would be what you would have, let's say, on your survey. And for the values, we have not applicable, I think is what NAP stands for, that's zero. One is extremely liberal, two liberal, three slightly liberal, and so on and so forth up to seven extremely conservative. So there's a, an order to it, right, that they selected, even though we have specified political views as sim simple buckets, they have it on a spectrum of conservativeness, if you will. So that's one way to think about this as an ordered scale. 
and eight for don't know, nine for non applicable. So that's what they have there for political views. And for degree, they have zero for high school, LT, I'm not sure what LT stands for, uh, one for high school, two junior college, bachelor, graduate, etc. So those are our two variables that we're going to use. Just making this smaller again. Okay. So those are the two variables that we are going to use for our Spearman's Road test correlation, right? Our correlation using Spearman's Road. So how do we do that? We go back to analyze. And here, we are going to pick correlate bivariate. So analyze correlate bivariate, click on there, and now we got to pick our variables from this list. We said that the variables we are going to use are ordinal level that's political views, right? Think of self as liberal or a conservative political views and highest degree here okay we are going to uncheck the box pearson and check spearman because that's what we're doing pearson's would require only scale or interval and ratio data in this case we have ordinal so we're going to click on spearman and click ok it pulls up our output file again which i'm going to maximize and here we have our non-parametric correlation so spearman's is a non-parametric version of Pearson's, which is parametric, which has certain assumptions about the distribution of data. So here, for our correlations, we have Spearman's row. Think of self as liberal or conservative, so your political views, and highest degree, and same thing uh, on the other side of the table. So it gives you, as we mentioned in class, a mirror image of the data because it gives you the correlation for the variable with itself. So say, think of self as liberal or conservative, think of self as liberal or conservative, the correlation coefficient obviously will be one because it's the same variable. Um, and then it will list the correlation with highest degree, which is really what we're interested in. And then it'll do the same here at the bottom. So this is a mirror view of that. We're just interested in the correlation between variables. So think of self as liberal, political view, and highest degree, and the correlation coefficient seems to be minus 0 0.014. Is it significant? We're interested in finding out right here in the level of significance, or the p-value in this case. So the p-value is 0.474 or 0.5. Is that less than 0 0.05, our alpha value? No, it's not. 0.5 is 50%. It's much it's much more, much higher than 5% or 0.05. So our p-value is greater than our alpha value, which means that this is not a statistically significant result. So what can we say? That there was a uh, no correlation or no statistically significant correlation between uh, our two variables, political view and highest degree obtained. Uh, so your level of education or highest degree that you obtained does not seem to co-vary with your political views. So that's it, everyone. This is Chi-Square and Spearman's Row by SPSS.